Hello, my name is Bo Wenyu, and I will present the solution to the problem rafting trip. In this problem, you are given an R time C grid that represents some rafting terrain. Each cell in the grid is either river flowing in one of the four directions or some land. Land cells may contain sightseeing spots. You will start a rafting trip from any river cell of your choice. Your raft will follow the river and you can visit adjacent sightseeing spots along the trip. Note that each sightseeing spot can only be visited at most once. Even if your raft passes by the same sightseeing spot multiple times, you shall count it only once. We'd like to determine the max number of sightseeing spots that you can visit in one single rafting trip. The constraints here are R and C are up to 500. Because of the constraint, we cannot afford simulating our rafting trip from each possible starting cell, because this will be too slow and take R square C square time. We will model the grid as a graph. The graph knows our river cells. There's an edge between two river cells if one of the river cell flows into the other one. Because each node has exactly one outgoing edge here, the graph is essentially a forest, with an exception that the tree roots can sometimes be cycles. We will consider each cycle a supernode. This is also sometimes called node contraction. In the slide illustration, we will see a single tree with a cycle root. The cycle root marked by the green rectangle has four nodes in a cycle. If we have a regular tree, the problem can be solved in linear time by running DFS from the tree root along reversed edges. We can keep track of which set of sightseeing spots have been visited so far in our DFS. For a tree with a cycle root, we just need a minor modification. We will attribute every cycle node adjacent sightseeing spots to their corresponding cycle root. The other part of the DFS remains exactly the same as the DFS on the regular tree. Let's summarize the solution here. First, we must identify all the cycles and build the forest graph. Cycle finding can be done either using DFS or topological sort. After we build the graph, we will run DFS from each tree root. This can be either a regular tree root or a cycle root. In our DFS, we can use a hash map to keep track of all the visited sightseeing spots. If a sightseeing spot is no longer adjacent to any node in the DFS path, we can remove it from the hash map. The total time and space complexity will be both O, R times C. There can be a slightly different way to run the DFS here. Instead of storing all the sightseeing spots, we can store our DFS ancestors instead. If we take a look at the example shown in the slide, suppose we are at the orange node and we are adjacent to this sightseeing spot. We would like to know if this spot has been visited by any of our DFS ancestors before. If so, we should not count it again. So we will store all the DFS ancestors from the green DFS root to our current node in the hash map. And then we will check if any of the red cell is actually among them. This approach has essentially the same time and space complexity as our previous approach.